Welcome. In this video, we'll learn how to use Microsoft PowerPoint to create a file for the Glowforge printer. We'll look at how to use PowerPoint tools and shapes, and we'll also look at how to bring in image files students have created on the iPad. Okay, so first to start out, let's open PowerPoint. So you can click the Start button, and it may appear somewhere up above, but you can also type PowerPoint here. And if you don't have it down on your task menu, you can right click and then pin to taskbar. And now here it is. <clears throat> so I'll click it here, or you can click it down, the shortcut button down here to open. We can open a blank presentation, blank presentation. I'm going to highlight this and click backspace or delete on my keyboard. And now I'm ready to bring some things in, some images. I can create shapes here. And those shapes you find under the Home tab, Home here. Um, but before we get started, I want to see ruler measurements. So let me click on View and then check the box for ruler. And now I can see how many inches uh, my, my image is in length and width. OK, now let's bring a file in from my downloads. I can click on the File Explorer here to access my folders. Then I can click on Downloads. And what I have here is a JPEG that was created, I believe, in Adobe Illustrator Draw, a free iPad app for drawing. This PDF was created in Notability, another free iPad app. So if I want to pull those into PowerPoint, an easy way to do that is to just click here, drag with your mouse. I'm holding my mouse down, and then I let go when I'm above PowerPoint. And there's the file. OK. I can click on the corner box here to make this smaller. <clears throat> I can look at where I can line this up, right, to see, OK, I'm going from 5 over to, uh, you know, 0.5, so that's 4 and a half inches. And the ruler is helpful for the measurements. Let's click back on the File Explorer again. And I'm going to move this to the side, click and drag to move it over. Then I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to click and hold on the PDF. And I will let go of my mouse once again my cursor is over PowerPoint. OK, there's the other file. We have our images. Maybe we want to add some text. So you can make sure you're on the Home tab at the top. If you find that these tabs are kind of disappearing, oops, if you find that they're not staying put, uh, and you click it, and then you click back, and the tab disappears. A trick is double click on the tab, home or any of them, and now it will stay pinned to the top. OK, to add some text, let's click on Shapes. And then you can choose basic under Basic Shapes, the text box, or it might be here under Recently Used. I click on my uh, PowerPoint file, and then I can start typing. Now I want to move this box around. So if you click inside the box, you'll be selecting the text. But if you look at the border outline and you click that with that four arrow icon, see what my cursor looks like? Click and drag, and now you can move the text around. You have options under the Home tab for different fonts. So let me click the drop down and choose Algerian. Why not? Now, when we print on the Glowforge, we have this 12 inch by 20 inch sheet or some other size of wood or other material and we don't want to waste a lot of that so a good thing to do is try and reduce the wasted blank space between these objects so let me just click and drag with my cursor to highlight all this stuff and then i'm going to click again and move it over uh-oh look at that it's starting to overlap and block the other image to fix that right click on the object that's on top then click on send to back everything you see will be engraved by the glowforge but we need these objects to be cut from the larger sheet of wood under the home tab click on shapes and then choose a rectangle the first option is a good one it might be here under recently used as well you can then click anywhere and click and hold anywhere on your PowerPoint file. And I'm holding my mouse down. When I let go, 
I will have uh, you know created a rectangle. Now, before I hit let go, uh, before I let go, if you want a perfect square, simply hold the shift key on your keyboard while holding your mouse. So watch this. Here I go, and it will automatically size the object for uh, the proportions of a square. So the, the sides will all be the same length. Again, you hold shift, then you can let go with your mouse, then you can let go with your keyboard. If this isn't the right size, you can move it around, but wait a second, we're blocking the image. So what you can do is click on Quick Styles, choose the first option, that's a good one, and we still can't see the image. So next, you have this Fill option, click the drop down, and choose No Fill. That's an important step. Let me size it the way I want. Okay. Now I need another box. So let me just right click here, hit copy, and then I'll right click anywhere on the file, choose the first paste option. Don't paste it as a picture, paste it like this. And then I can move this over. You can also use control C and control V to cut and paste or copy and paste. All right, let's say it's like that. That's how I want to cut. We are finally ready to export this to Glowforge. So what we do is we create a PowerPoint, uh, we change the PowerPoint file into a PDF file. So click on File, Save As, choose a spot, I'll browse, and I'll just put this in my, uh, my downloads. And I want to call this Sample Combo File. And maybe I should do final because I have another version. Then before I hit save, we click on this drop down for save as type and we choose PDF. Now I can hit save. And it will probably open the file. Okay. Next we open up Glowforge in a web browser. So I like to use Google Chrome. <clears throat> you type app.glowforge.com. Then you hit enter. It may prompt you to log in if you aren't already, but I am, and so it takes me to the screen. Click upload to upload a new file. Then go to the folder where you've got your stuff, your file. I'm in downloads is where I saved mine. Here it is, sample combo file final. And I hit open. And it processes. And here we are, the file has loaded. Um, our printer is on, and so this is literally a camera view of the wood placed inside the printer. There's a clip path, don't worry about that. We can click the X. And currently, you might notice it says no artwork, which is a little odd because I do have artwork here. Here's what's happening. If I click this and drag around, now it recognizes artwork. What happened before is there is a no print zone and you see it with those kind of marks, those hash marks on the side. And if you have your artwork inside the no print zone, it will not print any part of that file. And it goes gray when that's the case. But if I click and drag this up, now it's not gray anymore, so it will print. But look at what it's trying to print. This teal box is the background of the original file. I mean, in PowerPoint, there's this all this background area that I just highlighted, and Glowforge is trying to print all of that. It's trying to engrave some depth for that entire background. We do not want that background engraved. So what we have to do is find the background in this list on the left-hand side and choose Ignore. What's this? This is the smiley, and I want that engraved like it's currently set. Here's the painting, I want that engraved. The text should be engraved. And what's this right here? If you click it, notice how it selects the teal. That is the background right there. So instead of engrave, I need to click ignore. If I go to the bottom part, this is these are the boxes that I want to cut along. So that's exactly as I need it. And look at this, if I click with my mouse and drag, I can go all the way up to the edge of the no print zone and it still says ready. It recognizes my artwork. But if I move this over slightly, no artwork because the picture is in the no print zone. That's good. So 
By ignoring the background, you can get closer to the edge of the no print zone. So let's click and drag with our mouse. I'll move this over to here. It's perfectly fine to print over top the QR code. That's not a problem. Uh, so you can use the entire space of the, uh, of the material, the sheet. And <clears throat> once you're finished and ready, you can click this button. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to point out that you can check the ruler to see the measurements, how wide is the print. Here's a ruler on the side to see how tall it is. Uh, another thing you can do is copy and paste. Um, <clears throat> so if you click your, your print, then on your keyboard, hold the control button and click C. Then you can hold control and click V for paste. And here it is, it just made a second copy. And you can see the two kind of on top of each other. So let me click with my mouse and move this over. So you can print multiple copies. Maybe one you think is too big. So you decide to scale it down. You can click the box in the corner <clears throat> and make the, make the change to the size. If you make a change and you decide you don't want that, there's an undo button right here at the top. And this is the redo button. Once you've got your artwork positioned, <clears throat> and notice the no print zone only shows when you click on the object. So if you click away onto the print area, you don't see that border anymore. So just beware, right? Okay, once you're ready, you click this print button, and it takes a while to calibrate the printer and calculate the precision movements. So that's not a problem. We can wait for it to go through those initialization steps. Once it's finished, it will show you this screen. It tells you how long the print will take. And to start the job, we simply have to go to the Glowforge, the device itself, and push that button on the bottom right corner of the, uh, of the printer, and that will start the print. If you need to cancel, you just click this button here. <clears throat> It'll cancel the job. You can then hit Dismiss. The final thing to show is sometimes you will print multiple work from different students all at once. That's easy to do on Glowforge. If you have another file that you want to print, you can click this Add Artwork button. Then you can click Upload. So from here, I'll click on this PDF that I've created, and I click Open. It processes, and pretty soon we'll have that image coming up here. All right, second file. Hey, when I take it out of the no print zone, suddenly we see color here. Now, if you look on the left side, okay, here's the second file. It shows on top, so it comes to the top. The background, again, this is the background of the PDF. We have to ignore the background. Here we have the uh, engraving of the text. Here's the second file. That's what we want. So we can move it around. We can check and make sure it's not in the no print zone. You can resize it and uh, proceed in the same fashion we've learned. Thanks for watching.